guys, it's Actual Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Autumn is upon us. I, I don't know if it's quite here yet in London, but it's definitely on the way and the weather's turning and it's almost time for me to get out my whole bunch of spicier, warmer, cozier, darker, more resinous fragrances. So my reviews are probably gonna start turning that way. You might notice a difference in my reviews. So I wanted to kick off my first, I guess, autumnal style review or, or themed review with this absolute beauty. Bengal Rouge, let me just clean it. I always forget to clean it before I start the video. Bengal Rouge by Papillon Artisan Perfumes. Oh my gosh. So I was very, very lucky to receive this as a gift from the owner, Liz. Um, I did a spotlight on the entire brand where I sniffed all of them. So I will link that at the end of the video if you wanna go and find out more about the rest of the fragrances. This one was my favorite along with Salome and Liz very kindly sent me it. So obviously chuffed to bits because it's a stunner oh my god it's stunning so i heard a lot about this fragrance before i actually tried it when i looked at the notes when i said heard what people had said i knew that i was going to like it it's one of those ones when you read it on paper and you think yeah that one's going to be for me i can tell i love orientals and uh this one pretty much takes the cake so the inspiration of this fragrance is Liz's cat Mimi who is a Bengal cat and she didn't want to create a literal animal fur type smell she just created a fragrance with the notes based on the textures colors and feeling of the way the fur looks I guess and it's lovely it came out last year so it's the latest release to come from Papillon Artisan and they're a UK brand so it makes it even more special for me I love supporting and talking about brands from my hometown and my homegrown place that I'm, I'm grown in, born in. Mm. So the notes of this one are sandalwood, Turkish rose, sweet myrrh, as well as honey and vanilla. But in the description, Liz also, also mentions oak moss and one of the most powerful notes in here to my nose, which is tonka. And it's part of the reason I love it so much. So let me just spray it. It's on my hand drying, but I'm gonna spray it on my other hand. Oh, okay, so this is everything I love in an oriental. It's really focused on the amber mainly, um, but the biggest part of this is tonka for me and I will take tonka over vanilla any day of the week, any day of the week. Vanilla's vanilla, it's been done, we're familiar, we know what it's like, yeah, it's great, it smells really nice. Tonka to me is, oh, oh, someone's piping up. Tonka to me is just way nicer. It's much more interesting to me, only because I said vanilla is, has been done. Tonka has got that almondy, curing hay type smell because of all of the coumarin that's found naturally in tonka beans. And it's warm and a little bit woody. And this is a ultimately smooth, beautiful, cozy oriental. A lot of people compare it to Shalimar by Guerlain, the only comparison is, is that they're both really ambery. So this is an amber fragrance with a focus on tonka for me. And it's immediately rich and enveloping and smooth. But there's also a couple of other different facets and tones going on. There is something a little bit dry in here as well. And I do detect something animalic. I don't know what that might be, whether it's civet or something like that, but it's in no way something that overtakes the fragrance or makes it feel like an animalic fragrance. It's more about the resins and the smoothness and the rich, warm, cozy hug that it gives you. But there's definitely something a little bit sinister going on in the background. And I know Liz likes her animalic and rough notes, so it's almost like she put a drop of that in there just to tie in with the theme of the rest of her fragrances. But this one feels different to the others. It's got a totally different texture to all of the others. And you'll see in my video, if you watch the spotlight that I did, that I kind of swooned over it then and I'm swooning over it now. Mm. Liz is really great at doing vintage style. She's really good at doing throwback. And this one feels like an oriental of the past, but I feel like Tonka makes things feel modern. Just That's just my opinion. I feel like instead of putting vanilla, Tonka just adds a little bit of an extra twist to it. So 
great. To me, the honey is only semi-noticeable. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a honey fragrance, but the fragrance does have a gloopy feeling. There's something syrupy about it, and that's obviously the honey, but this is all about Tonka. So, and being a big Tonka fan, I'm asking myself, why don't I have more fragrances with Tonka in them, or Tonka that's prominent in my collection? Well, I don't know why. I, I do now, yay, for this one. But um, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm gonna have to start, start adding to that immediately, if not sooner. So really easy to like. There is a reason why this gets a lot of love. I am on that hype train. I am with those people that love it. I think it's an amazing Oriental. Lasts a really long time. There's a lot of rich notes in here that make fragrances last. There's resins, there's woodiness, but really it's about smoothness. It's about gorgeous, somewhat powdery, gloopy amber with a massive tonka bean. And um, I'm a fan. Another thing I don't notice so much is the rose. There's definitely a floral element here, but when I first tried this, I wouldn't necessarily pin it on rose, but it's probably because my senses just hone in on the oriental side and the amber and the, the tonka and things like that and the resins. So it's almost like the roses kind of mingled in and sunken into everything and as opposed to being something that jumps out. So that's not a bad thing. That's just what I get when I smell it. Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And when it starts to dry, this one turns a lot more powdery on me. The tonka is present throughout and that is part of the reason I love it. I, I'm glad of that. I'm glad it doesn't go anywhere and I'm glad that it's a focus for me. So the powder comes out, this ambery accord. I don't think she necessarily lists amber, but the combination of things in here make it feel like amber. I mean, you have a wood, you have a resin, you have a sweet note. That usually constitutes the amber accord in some way, shape or form. So that's why it goes there. And um, this one I haven't really worn much yet. I mean, I've tried it on my skin lots of times, but I mean, well, actually I've used probably about five or five mils of it already. But now that it's turning colder, this is gonna be something that I go to a lot in the coming months. So I get huge longevity out of this. I get seven, eight, sometimes nine hours. I wear this one in bed. Well, I have been wearing it in bed quite a lot recently just to cozy up and watch a film. I guess I'm just kind of willing autumn to hurry up and get here now. We're in that in-between stage of is it gonna be sunny today or is it gonna pour down and be cold? We don't know. So anyway guys, that is my review of Bengal Rouge by Papillon Artisan Perfumes. Absolutely gorgeous, don't need to say any more about it. I'm Ouch Vomano, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.